When we look at the treatment approach for patellofemoral pain syndrome, it's gone through an interesting evolution. In the beginning, we used to focus on strengthening the VMO, which is a small muscle on the inside portion of the quad, and the idea was is that by strengthening the VMO with terminal knee extensions, that we'd be able to help align the patellofemoral joint and that would help decrease the pain. But for many reasons, we've moved away from targeting the VMO muscle and instead focusing on strengthening either the quad muscles in general or on the glute muscles. And the current recommendations from the clinical practice guidelines are to do a combination of quad strengthening and glute strengthening. But does one or the other actually result in better long-term outcomes? A study by Alexandria Hott et al. published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports looked at a exercise program for patellofemoral pain syndrome and there was three different exercise groups included in this study. There was an isolated hip strengthening group, an isolated knee strengthening group, and then a free activity group which was allowed to kind of do whatever exercise that they wanted to do. And in total there was 112 participants included in this study. For the hip strengthening exercise program, there were three different exercises that were included. There was a sideline hip abduction exercise, a sideline hip external rotation exercise, commonly referred to as the clamshell exercise, and then a prone hip extension exercise. All of these exercises were performed three sets of 10 repetitions, and they were gradually progressed to three sets of 20 repetitions, and then they would increase the load associated with the exercises. For the isolated knee extension exercises, what they would do is again three different exercises. There was a supine straight leg raise, a supine terminal knee extension exercise, and then mini squats. And all of these exercises were also performed to that same dosage. So three sets of 10 initially progressed to three sets of 20, and then they would increase the load with the exercises. And what this study found was that at the end of 12 months, there was no significant difference between any of the three groups included in the study when looking at either function and or pain. They did find that there were improvements in muscle strength in both the knee exercises as well as the hip exercise programs, but those did not translate into better superior clinical results. And when we look at the results of this study, it's interesting. Some of the results are a little bit surprising, and then some of the results aren't all that surprising. And specifically when we look at specific targeted exercises compared to general exercises, there seems to be a trend that the specific exercises don't typically outperform general exercise. So when we look at low back pain, for example, specific core exercises don't seem to be superior to general exercises. There was a study that looked at core strengthening compared to walking and found that the outcomes were similar. And similar to what we see in this study, that specific either um, hip or knee strengthening exercises don't perform better than just kind of free activity. So that result kind of seems similar to what we see in some of the other literature on other conditions. But it's important to note that all of the groups included in this study, exercise did help improve function and decrease pain. Although it's interesting that when we look at the end of 12 months, that function wasn't 100% restored and pain wasn't zero. And so they still had some functional limitations and pain at the end of 12 months. And when we think about rehab for musculoskeletal conditions, there tends to be a big focus on the biomechanics and specifically right now building capacity. So if we're looking at patellofemoral pain syndrome, it would be improving the capacity and the strength of the quads as well as improving the capacity, strength, and motor control of the glutes in helping with patellofemoral pain syndrome. And if that's the case, well then, why aren't we getting complete resolution if it's just a strength or motor control issue? Are we not appropriately addressing either of those? Which, in this study, I think we can make the argument because some of the exercises, they're a little bit outdated in that uh, the knee exercises were mostly focused on terminal knee extension, which is a VMO exercise, instead of just strengthening the quads in general. And then the glute exercises were relatively low load as well, and I couldn't actually find um, if they'd improve or uh, increase the loads to high enough loads to actually build strength. So when we look at the clinical practice guidelines for patellofemoral pain syndrome, 
there was one study where they actually found that a combined knee and glute strengthening program outperformed a knee only uh, strengthening program and they actually scaled the weights that were used to 70% of a one repetition max. So there might be an issue in the design of this study in that the loads that were used for the rehab programs for either the isolated knee or isolated hip exercises just weren't sufficient to actually build strength. Therefore, I'd be interested to see if they redid this study and changed some of the exercises and also increased the loads that were used in the rehab program for both the hip and the knee and see how that actually changes the outcomes in this study. Overall, putting this research article into a little bit of clinical context, it shows that exercise is a viable treatment option for patellofemoral pain syndrome. And we have a little bit of flexibility in which exercises we can use to achieve that uh, reduction in pain and improvement in function. Although there still is a lot of question about which exercises we should use and what loading strategies we should use for those to get the best results. But overall, exercise is still a useful treatment for those with patellofemoral pain syndrome. Thank you for watching this episode on rehabilitation approaches for patellofemoral pain syndrome. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit the bell icon as well. I'll see you guys in the next video.